15. Luke chapter number 15. If you like writing titles down or keeping up with titles, you can put the title down, The Hog Pen Trail. The Hog Pen Trail. Now we're looking here in, in Luke chapter 15, going to start in verse number 11. Everybody knows this parable. It's a familiar uh, verses of Scripture. And uh, I ask tonight as we read this Scripture to open your mind and heart uh, to see... Maybe could maybe we be fitting in the hog pen trail. Amen. Uh, verse 11 says, And he said, A certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said, Father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together his, and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance on righteous living. And when he had spent all, their, uh, spent all he, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to want. And he went and joined himself to the citizen of the country, and he sent him into uh, his fields to feed the swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat. No man gave unto him. And when he had came to himself, he said, How many hired servants and my, fathers have, and my fathers have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger. I will arise, and I will go to my father. And will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him. Mm -mm -mm -mm. If there's ever a place in the Bible where it needs to have... Mm -mm -mm. Right here's the place. And he had compassion. And ran and fell upon his neck and kissed him and said, Son, and, say, and, and the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight. Am no more worthy to be called thy son. But <laughs> the father said to his servant, Bring forth the best robe and, and put it on him, and put the ring on his hand and shoes upon his feet. Bring hither the fathered calf and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and he's found, and he began to be merry. Let's just stop right there and, and let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we just love you. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for the word of God. Thank you, Lord, for the, the power of the Holy Spirit. We ask, Lord, that you move upon us. Speak to our hearts. Lead us and guide us and direct us. We love you. We thank you, Lord. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. We're looking tonight upon the hog pen trail. There's many ways to get up on the hog pen trail. We can see to this example written into the Word of God here in Luke chapter 15. Now, if I would say this story right here, it wouldn't mean a whole lot to it don't mean nothing if you'd say this story, but when the Lord Jesus Christ himself uh, uh, spoke this parable unto the people, I think we need to give notice. I think we need to stop and back up for a few seconds and take a look at what the Lord is trying to tell us through this young man right here and what was going on that got him on the hog pen trail. And we're going to look here tonight uh, and see through the word of God. Now there's, there's some things here that I believe that the Lord's trying to tell us, and we're going to look at through this young man's eyes and, and the first thing you see here and, and verse number 12 and the younger of them said to his father father give me my portion of goods the first thing to, when we get on the hog pen trail can I say this is a selfish attitude man Lance we was last night down there listening to this preacher preach and I thought he was going to preach my exact message that he was preaching when he started talking about the selfishness within the church and I'm telling this this man right here this, this younger you see uh, uh, the old the oldest of the sons is the one that gets the inheritance. Do you understand what I'm saying? Amen. The youngest one, he gets kind of what's left over, but yet uh, he wasn't to receive this until the older son received all his goods for his inheritance after the father had died. Can I say that after he died, he's gone. But the younger one, before the father died, before the oldest got his portion, he went to his daddy and says, listen here, give me what's mine. The give me attitude. Amen. Can 
can I say this? Uh, today in our new modern age churches, uh, we're looking up in the face of God says, give me salvation, but I don't want to change. Amen. Uh, that's what the world's preaching today. Uh, you, just, uh, you just say the words uh, and go about your will. Go ahead and start smoking your dope and still partying on the weekends and, and shocked up with one another like animals. Uh, you can do all that and you still go to heaven. My friend, that's not what my Bible says. My Bible says there will be a change in your heart. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. There's no such thing as, as a, a being right with God and living in the world. Amen. Uh, you're on the whole paying trail. Uh, you got a selfish attitude when you're looking at God says, give me salvation, but I don't want to change. Uh, I want to live just like I want to live. I want to do my sin and say I got salvation. Uh, I want to live in the world, look like the world, talk like the world, but I want my salvation. My friend, you got a selfish attitude. Amen. When we look into the face of God, it says, give me peace in the dark storm, but I don't want to commit to nothing. Amen. There's our church today. Amen. Uh, we want all the peace that God's going to give us, but we don't want to commit to anything. We want to handpick and tiptoe through the toilets and what I want to do and what I don't want to do. The work is not in here. The work is out there. Amen. There's a lost and dying world, dying and going to hell, and we're in here playing uh, games with ourselves in here, trying to make ourselves think we're committed to God. It ain't the way it works. Just come to church on Sunday morning is not a commitment to God. Amen. Just going to church on Sunday night is not a commitment to God. Hey, just coming on Wednesdays doesn't make you committed to God. Amen. We don't come to church for salvation. I come to church because I am in salvation. Yeah. That's just a French benefit. <laughs> Give me peace in a dark storm, but I don't want to commit. Well, we got all kinds of excuses on the commitment, don't we? We don't want to get involved. We don't want to, we don't want to sink in time. We don't want to put no roots down. We don't want to do these type things because it's going to cost us. We got a selfish attitude about our time. Amen. I don't want to give God none of my time, but God should should just pour all his his peace upon me. And when we get in the dark, you know, you can always tell the selfish people, they don't never come to an altar, they don't never pray until something hits their lives. Amen. When, when somebody gets arrested in the family, when somebody is uh, told that they got cancer and it might be bad or when somebody has a heart attack then you see them fall upon the altar of God oh God we need your help then when God reaches down and touches they're out of sight out of mind back in the world doing the worldly things again they're selfish in their commitment God we get this selfish thing give me answers in my prayer Lord, give me the answers I need in my prayer. But you know what? We'll ask God for all these things to give us answers. Give me, give me, give me. And I want and I need. Give me, give me, give me. But you know, when's the last time you actually got a hold of God for somebody else on their behalf? Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Those who do pray, they say that most uh, Christians don't pay, pray no more than two minutes a day. Amen? That's your lifeline to heaven. <laughs> That's your lifeline to God. Amen? And two minutes, less than two minutes a day is what the average saved person prays. And then less than two minutes a day, they say that 95% of that is me, 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 I, 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 and what I want and what I want and what I need. It ain't nothing to do with nobody else. We don't pray directly for the needs of somebody else when somebody's hurting and somebody's in need. Uh, we don't pray about them because our needs is more important than their needs. You know what God's trying to teach us? Others first. Amen. We're last. Amen. I believe if we ever got a hold of that that others are first and we're last I believe God will start answering our prayers a whole lot more than what He does. A selfish attitude. You know, we, I think we, we get to the place here. You can see this young man as he goes to his father. He says, give me the portions of good that follow to me. And you notice right here, now God's not going to, he's not going to force you to stay in his will. He's not going to force you to commit. He's not going to force you to change your life. He's not going to force you to do any of these things. You notice right here when Jesus is telling the story, the father, the Bible says, right after he divided unto him his living. He said, here, if you want to take it, just take it. 
If you want to leave the Father, you want to leave the shelter of the Father, the, the, the house of the, uh, the Father, the, the supplies of the Father, and take what I'm going to give you and run out in the world, well, if that's your choice, you go right ahead and do it. I'm not going to stand in the door. I'm not going to grab a hold of you. And I'm not going to beg, scream, and, and kick my legs and pout and, and turn red face. If you want to go, go. That's what I kind of see right here. Selfishness that he was willing to live the Father's house and the work and place it upon somebody else. Hey. Yeah. Amen. Amen, preacher. If you're not there doing it, guess what? Somebody else is going to have to. Amen. Not concerning that somebody's got to pick up your slack. Hey, I'm just going to go out in the world. Selfish attitude. That's the first sign of being on the hog pen trail. The second thing we want to look at. He took a journey. Boy, I tell you, when you, when you get on the whole pin journey uh, trail, usually uh, you'll leave the Father's house. Amen. You're on that journey. You're, you're hell-bent. You're going to do what you want to do, regardless if it's against the will of God, against the, the will of the Father, against the Word of God. You're hell-bent. You're going to do it. And no matter what anybody says, what anybody tells you, you're going to do it regardless because I'm going to make a point. This whole younger guy right here, he gathered up his goods. And the Bible says right here, not many days after the younger gathered all together and he took his journey. Can I say a lot of Christians today is in that journey stage right now? They left the Father's house and are journeying now. They're, they're, they're looking for something they can do for God. They're, they're looking for some place that they can have some pleasure. They're looking for a new place to hang out, uh, new friends to be around. And, and here you see right here that he took his journey. It's not what the Father, the Father didn't want him to go, but he let him go anyways. He's hell-bent, he's going to do it. It seems most of our folks today stays more focused on doing what they want to do instead of what the Father wants them to do. Does it seem that way to y'all? They're more focused upon what they want to do than what God wants them to do. Jesus is making it very plain in the story that if you, if you want to go, He's going to let you go. But you know something? If you take a journey with what the Father gives you, the Bible says right here in the far country, and there He wasted His substance. He wasted His substance. There's some powerful things that God gives us when we're in the house of God. Number one is a testimony. Amen. Uh, peace and joy beyond uh, anything that the world can explain. He gives us hope in our hearts. Uh, and buddy, when you take that journey and leave the Father's house, uh, you start to waste your substances. You start wasting your testimony. You start wasting the stuff that the Lord had given us. You know, I, I, can I say this? When people get into this journey, they're completely blind to what God wants them to have. The church is... It's, it seems like the church has taken the play uh, out of the world, uh, uh, taken a play out of the, the world's playbook and try to put it into their own lives. And that uh, what I want to do is it's all about me and, and blinded to the things of God, what God commands us to do. You know, God commands us, if I ain't mistaken, He says to be ye holy for I am holy, saith the Lord. Is that, is that Bible? Yeah. I'm just saying, is that Bible? When, you, when you're on the whole pin trail, you can care less about being holy. Amen. When being, when being right and justifying yourself becomes more bigger than being holy, we got a problem. You're on a whole pin trail. And I'm going to tell you, I've gotten up on the hog pen trail before. And buddy, I'm telling you, it's a stinky trail. And it's leading to destruction. And the Holy Ghost is, is wooing on your heart and wooing on your heart and making you miserable. And we'll just go blind to all of those things. And, and we'll forget about the goodness of God and, and the prayers being answered in the Word of God. And we'll forget about all these things in our mind and become blindness. And we get stereotyped upon the thing that we're heading toward. <laughs> This old boy right here, Jesus is telling this story. This old boy had a pocket full of money. He didn't need God no more. He didn't need the Father no more. He didn't need the Father's shelter, His haven, His haven of safety. He didn't need that no more. He didn't need the substance from the Father no more. He had his own pocket full of change, and he says, I can do it myself now. I'm going to take my journey. And as he went into the far country, he started to waste his substance. Everything that the Father had given him, he started wasting it on righteous living. And can I say this? If it ain't in the will of 
God, it's righteous living. Amen? Amen. If it ain't where God wants you to be, you're wasting everything that God gave you. And the Bible kind of tells us, and Jesus in this story kind of relates to us that what God had given you, if you're not going to use it for His glory and where He wants you to be, He's going to let you run out of it. Amen? Amen. You ever run out of peace? <laughs> run out of joy? You ever run out of your substance, your testimony? You know, there's people that once filled our seats years ago. And boy, at one time it seemed like they had such great joy in their heart. And, and they, they was excited. They would work with the youth. and They would work uh, doing this and doing that. And, and next thing you know, they, 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 they asked the God, said, I'm going to take what you gave me. And, and, and they went out and they, they started buying them big, big racing side-by-side four-wheelers. Things like that. Next thing you know, they started missing on Sunday. Next thing you know, they're out of church completely. And they've wasted all their substance that God had given, all the joy and all the peace and, and, and all their testimony. And now they're, they're sitting in the world and their testimony's shot. They can't even tell their children or their grandchildren how wonderful Jesus Christ is and how they should be saved and how they should be washed in the blood of a lamb. They can't even tell their children. Because you know what your children, their children are smart. Amen. A three-year-old kid probably look up and says, how come you ain't got it? If it's as good as you say it is, Papa, how come you ain't living it? We're just trying to do this talk salvation. Because I say it's good, you should believe it. Because I say uh, that you, you should have peace and joy and you should be faithful and committed. Uh, that should be good enough for you. You do it. Amen. They're looking at our lives and they're saying, well, you're not doing it. Why should I do it? You don't wasted your testimony with your grandchildren and your children and they're, they're, they're going to waste their substance because Mama and Papa did and Mommy and Daddy did. If I can remember when they crossed the river going into that new promised land God told Joshua he said you get one man from every tribe and when you cross that river I want you to take a stone out of the midst of that river not on the side not on this side not on the other side but I want you to get it in the midst of the river he said I want you to take a stone each one of them and I want you to stock them up on the other side of the river because God done brought you through the wilderness and across the, 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 the river and now you're in the new promised land I want you to stock them stones up there what did he want them to stock them stones up there for what was that for the Bible says for a testimony Amen. so the Bible even says that when your children and their children's children come by and says what meaneth these stones you can pick one up and says, well, son, look at here. This is what God brought us through the Red Sea. <laughs> Boy, he was so good. Uh, and the Pharaoh had his army pinned us up against the Red Sea. And God parted the sea. And we walked across on dry ground. And pick up another one and says, look at here. Uh, we was out in the wilderness where nothing would grow. No water, no nothing. And manna, bread, fell from heaven. Every night it fell down. And we could gather it up and had plenty to eat. And we wandered through the wilderness for 40 years. Uh, and he put that stone there and said, look at here. Uh, that's a barren place that we're in. You couldn't find no water, but I tell you, Jesus Christ, the rock set behind us and water flowed from it all day long and fed our sheep, fed our, our, our oxen, fed everything we had, fed all of us, and we never went thirsty. And he put that rock down and he picked the next rock up and he says, look here, this is called the goodness of God. Yeah. He never failed us. Right. He was always with us and put that testimony down. And you know what we need to build some testimonies in our life for our children the next generation to see? Right. Don't you believe that it's important for them to see uh, uh, mommy and daddy reading the Bible? Don't you think it's important that they see mommy and daddy praying? Amen? Uh, I say uh, uh, mommy and daddy is usually out of the, uh, the picture now. Mama and papa is raising the children in today's generation. Ain't it important for them to see mama and papa praying and reading their Bible and being faithful and being committed and that's the way they're going to learn themselves to be faithful and committed and read their Bible and pray when they see you do it? They don't need to hear you do it. They need to see you do it. We're too busy on our journey away from the things of God. And then we're trying to be in our journey and we're trying to justify ourselves in the state we're in and everybody's doing it now. This is the way church is now. We're not supposed to have godly music no more. We're not supposed to have the Bible no more. 
Let's get us some interpretive dancing. What do you think? I ain't never figured that out myself. Unless you got somebody who's deaf and can't see, what's the use of all that garbage going on? I think this good old fashioned preaching and singing will do the job. I think you don't need to perform and play act to get somebody interested. If they're, if they're not interested just in the Holy Spirit and the Word of God, my friend, get saved. Get saved and boy, you will be interested in it. Well, salvation will change it. Amen. Let's stop trying to justify our state and just get all the way in. Amen. Let's get back to the Father when we had it made. He took his journey. Some things happened in this journey. The Bible said he wasted his substance on righteous living. That means ungodly. <laughs> all right? And he spent all he had. He arose a man of mighty famine in the land, and he began to want. It's something when God's blessings run out on you, you're going to notice the world ain't going to help you. The devil ain't going to help you. The devil don't answer your prayers. Amen? The devil ain't going to bring you food. The devil ain't going to, ain't going to bring you peace. The, the devil's in the torment business. He's not in the peace business. The devil ain't going to sign a save your children one little bit. He ain't going to help your children one little bit. The devil's job is to pull them away. His job is constantly pulling away from the things of God. That's the devil's job. That's the world's job. The world didn't help us, old boy. So he took it upon himself. He said, well, I'm away from dad. I'm away from the father. I didn't waste everything he done gave me. My peace is gone. My joy is gone. Everything that the father gave me is gone. But I'm still, I'm still my own two feet. I'm on my two feet. I, I'm still, I'm still the man of men. I can take care of myself. Verse 15 said he went and joined himself to a citizen of the country. And he sent him into the fields to feed the swine. Boy, to, to somebody, uh, to a Jew, that's as low, as low as you can get. If it, it's not the snake we're talking about, it's the snake's belly. Amen. That's how low this old boy done got. And it's, a, it's funny, he, he joined himself to the citizen and he went into the fields to feed the hogs. And the Bible says, verse 16, he would have fainted, he would have died if he didn't eat what the hogs was eating. Boy, it's a shame we got to go on this, get on the hog pen trail and go all the way down to the muck and mire, stink and water down in the hogs, and we got to eat with the hogs and drink with the hogs and smell like the hog. When we lose everything we got, usually when you hit that bottom, that's when you lose your husband, that's when you lose your wife, you lose your family, you lose your job, you lose everything you got. And here you are on the hog pen trail and you start to think, this old boy here started thinking, man, I had it made when I was at my father's house. I had it made. He took his journey. He joined himself to the old hog farmer. You know, I believe that, and I, I'm going to say this, and we're, we're going to be buddies, right? We're still friends. I believe saved people need to hang around saved people. Amen. 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 Now, that don't mean that we need to look down on unsaved and, and look like we're better than they are. We need to give them the gospel. You give them the gospel and you get away. Amen. Amen. I think we need to hang around saved people. I think we need to hang around positive saved people. Amen. Yeah. We shouldn't be hanging around somebody that done left the father's house and took her journey and heading on the hog pen trail. Well, I'm trying to help them. We need to help them. We need to pray for them. But you got to be careful. When somebody takes that journey, they're going to pull all they can pull with them when they're going down. They want as many people they can grab a hold of. It doesn't make no difference how they're going to get them. If they got to lie, cheat, and steal, they're going to grab them and they're going to drag them all the way down to the old pen trail because misery loves company. You probably find that in the Bible somewhere. That's like what Harmon said. The guy said, well, you know what it says in the Bible? Every tub's got to send its own bottom. Y'all can use that like that. Let's, so this old boy right here, and now verse... Verse 17 is a defining moment for this young boy right here. The Bible says, and when he came 
to himself. There's always going to be a time if you are a child of God, if you are truly born again, a child of God, if there ever was a change in your heart, if the Holy Spirit ever came in your heart, it doesn't matter how far you want to run from God into the hog pen trail, there's going to come a time when you're going to come to yourself. Amen. And that meaning, that phrase, come you, you want to realize what you have done. Oh, it's fun in games now. I got the crowd hanging around me now. We're laughing and giggling now. This old boy was too. Jesus is telling the story now, all right. He wants us to have something out of this. He had all these buddies when he had the cash. When he's heading down the, in his journey, on the, the whole pin trail, he, 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 he probably got to gather them up a group, and heading down the whole pin trail laughing and carried on. But when the substance left, the friends left. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, and he came to himself. What would that have been like? That was probably the day that he had hog slop dripping off his jaws where he's been having his head down in the hog trough. Stinking like the hogs. He's looking left. He's looking right. There ain't nobody within miles of him. Snarling their nose up at him. Wouldn't even help him. Just said, man, you're too far gone. I said, this old boy probably put his, dropped his head into his hands. And he said, my God, my God, what have I done? That's going to be a defining moment to everybody's life. If they are truly saved, they'll come to that point somewhere in their walk. God will not leave them like that. There's a time of reckoning going to happen. And this guy starts to think, how many hired servants of my father's, uh, my father hath enough bread to eat to spare, and I'm perished with hunger. He's, he's reasoning within himself now. He's saying, man, my daddy's got these servants. They've got a warm place to stay. They've got all the bread that they can eat. The father is, is even good to the servant. And, I, you know, and I done blew it as a son. I done took my inheritance, told him I didn't want to be his son no more. I didn't want him to be my daddy no more. And I went out and took my journey. So what I'm going to go back, if I can't no longer be his son, I just want to be a servant. If I can just get close to the father, if I can get close, the boy was smart enough to know if he can get back close to the Father, he's going to be taken care of. So he's reasoning in himself. And I'll, I'll go. I will arise and I'll go to my Father and I will say to him, I have sinned against heaven and before thee and am no worthy to be called thy son. I, I can't even be your son. I'm not worthy to be your son. Can I say, none of us is worthy. None of us is worthy to be the son of God. None of us. That might pop your bubble, but we're not worthy. I stand worthy because I'm covered in the blood. <laughs> Jesus don't see me. He sees the blood. Mm. He's reason. He's, he's, he's going through this plan. He's, he's going to make it all right. He said, I got the words down. He probably rehearsed it time and time and time again. If you go back to the Levitical law, you know what should have been happening to this old boy? He's supposed to have been stoned to death. For this very act that he did, if he went back to his father, his father had every right to take him before the elders of the church and they was to put him to death by right. That's what's supposed to happen. The Levitical law was true. They was going to follow the Levitical law. I am no word worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hard servants. So now he done rehearsed this enough. He done got his plan in mind. And he done got to the place now. He done thought, well, I just assume go back home and be put to death there to live and die in this swamp hole I'm in right now. See, once you get break fellowship with God, if you're saved, but you want, I tell you, the next best thing to you, you'd almost have to die to feel better. Amen. Amen. A, true, a true child of God is not going to go back into the world or go against the will of the Father. A true uh, a saved person is not going to go contrary to the Word, to the will of the Father, to, to anything, and go out in the world and pop bubble gum and chew gum and have a time of their life forever. The Bible says sin is a pleasure for a season more than the judge. 
judgment. Amen. They're going to come to themselves. This guy, he said, I'd just soon die in my father's house and my fa by the hand of my father than to die in this hog pen with some hogs I don't even know. I'm going home. He rehearsed it enough. Verse 20 gives us the count of that. He arose and came to his father. But, thank you, Bob. I like them butts in the Word of God. That same butt right there is the same butt you say you see over there in Romans where uh, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And you get on over, it says, For the wages of sin is death. Same butt. It's different on this side as it is on this side. When he was yet a great way off, his father saw him. And had compassion. Now, how would that go? How, how do you think that took place? When he was a great way off, it tells me that the father was looking for him. Amen. The father had his eye on the only trail that the boy could come down. He never took his eye off that trail. He's probably telling his, his other sons, and he said, listen, he said, I know, I, I know old Benny went away, took all of his substance, and he wasted. Word came back, he's in the hog pen, but I'm going to watch it for him because I know he's going to come back home. Where else can he go? <laughs> Where else can he go? Boy, I tell you, I love it when I read that scripture, and he saw him. It probably wasn't hard to pick out. He probably didn't look like no other man. He probably, probably could have smelled him a whole lot before he saw him. Yeah. Wasn't in the hog pen. You ever, you ever get, you ever get, you ever, anybody ever have hogs with the old younger? Mm -hmm. Hey, didn't that mire, if you got that stuff on you, it stunk. Mm -hmm. You could wash it in bleach. Mm -hmm. And an hour later, you could still smell it on your hands and your clothes. You can't get that stink off of you. Hear this old boy stinking like the hog trail, the hog pen trail. His dad seen him a great way off and had compassion and ran. The Bible said, and fell on his neck. What position was that boy in if he fell? If, if you fall, do you fall up? <laughs> you fall down, don't you? Down. The old boy seen his dad run and says, all right, this is it. Uh, I'm going to be put to death. He probably laid prostrate on the ground. Uh, the sign of mercy and for his father. And the father seen him. The father didn't care what he smelt like. <laughs> he didn't care how dirty he was. He didn't care what he had been eating, what he had been drinking, where he was, where he wasted the substance and fell upon his neck and all that. Oh my land. Mm. Oh my. Fell upon his neck. Kissed him through all that mud, mire, that stink. Now the son gained his composure. So I say it probably shook him and jarred him when his father fell upon him. He said, well, that, that's just part of the process. He's probably going to call the elders and they're going to stone me to death. So I'm going to make my plea right now. And he probably, he, the Bible says right here, and the son said unto his father, he probably had to say it like this. Excuse the way it's going to sound. Father, I've sinned against you and I'm from heaven and I don't deserve to be called thy son. If I could just be your if I could just be your hard servant, Lord, just let me be a servant. That's probably the way it sounded. You notice that the father never said anything about what he had done. He didn't rear back and put his hands on his hips and said, I told you so. You shouldn't have done it. You did it anyways. You deserve what you get. He didn't say uh, that you made your bed lie in it. He didn't say that. He didn't say nothing like that. What did he say to this old boy right here? He didn't say, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. The father said... Verse 22, but the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe. <laughs> Put it on him. Put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. 
bring the fat and hither the fat and calf and killed it. Let us eat and drink and be merry, for my son was dead. Amen. But he's alive now. Amen. He was lost and he's found. <laughs> you notice he didn't say, My servant was found. He said, My son was found. Well, when we get on that hog pen trail and we go all the way down to the hog pen and we think I done did it all, I done seen it all, and, and there's no way God's going to forgive me, no way God can use me, I'm finished, I'm washed up, no way God's going to use a drug addict, no way God's going to use an alcoholic, no way somebody's going to use somebody like me. I went too far, too far, too far. And buddy, you can plead to, I just want to be a servant, Lord, just a servant. The Lord's going to look down at you. He says, you're my son. <laughs> You'll never, ever stop being my son. You'll always, always be my son. Boy, aren't you glad that Jesus is merciful, full of love and grace and compassion? Jesus now is telling this story to us. He's wanting us to see something in this story that might apply to ourselves today. Do you... Maybe you got a selfish attitude today. Maybe you're just looking at what God's going to give you, what, what, what you deserve. You know what we deserve, huh? What do we deserve? If we'd ask, if we go to the Father right now and say, give me the portion of the goods that falleth to me, I believe He could open the pit up and every one of us could be sucked in that pit. That's right. Justifiedly. Amen. We all deserve hell. And there's not a person on this earth that walked on this earth other than Jesus Christ that shouldn't be in hell. We all deserve hell. That's what our deservance is. That's right. So everything we do should be about the Lord, right? Amen. Glorifying His name. But I'm be honest. I'll be honest. It doesn't take a whole lot in our lives to get us to shaking that we'll take a journey. Amen. Amen. You don't even have to go against the Word of God. You don't even have to go. Uh, the, the preaching could be lining up with the Word of God. The, the things, the singing could be lining up with the Word of God. And still people will get upset. And they'll take them a journey into a far country. And they'll waste their substance. Uh, they could be shouting hallelujah, but they're wasting their substance. Amen. There's a right way and a wrong way to do things. If you don't line up with this precious holy Word of God, guess what it is? It's wrong. Amen. I don't care what man has to say. I don't care what you say to justify yourself. If it ain't lining up with this, it's wrong. If it ain't lining up with love, mercy, compassion, forgiveness, guess what it is? What is it? It's wrong. It's easy. Don't never say never. I'll never take a journey and get away from God. You don't have no idea what's around the next corner that's going to blindside you. And then we'll join ourselves to a, the world. We'll hook up with the world, the things of the world. We'll try to justify our condition by the world standards instead of God's standards. But you know what? You're going to do that. And when all your substance is gone, your testimony is gone, your joy is gone, the Holy Spirit's going to bring you around where you're going to come to yourself. And then you're going to plead to the Father, I'm no more worthy to be thy son. Just make me a servant. But aren't you glad he's saying, no, no, no. I loved you. I died for you. Hey, the, the, that, that blood is still shimmering and red on the, on the mercy seat. It's still got all kinds of cleansing power in it. And buddy, I'm glad I go every day to the mercy seat and I claw out the blood. And that blood, the more blood that comes out, the more blood comes in. <laughs> Amen. You know what blows me away? It takes the same amount of blood to forgive a murderer, a rapist, a child molester, as it does somebody who just told a little white lie. It's the same amount of blood. I'm glad that I'm a child of God. I'm glad I have the Word of God to look into. Maybe here tonight you're struggling with something in your life. Maybe... Maybe you, we, we get to the place and we can, we can get selfish in our, our, in our walk with God. We're just looking at what we can get. We're looking what, what we want salvation. We don't want change. We want peace. And we don't want commitment. We want prayers answered, but we don't want to pray for nobody else. Hey, we can get there. Maybe that probably explains you up and down. 
Maybe you're on the hog pen trail now. And, boy, you can see the hog pen in sight. You know you ain't reading your Bible. You know you ain't praying. You know the songs mean nothing. The preaching means nothing. This is all just something that just, you just hurry up. I'm just here. I'm in and out. Just get me in get me out. My friend, you're in a hog pen trail. Won't you come and say, Lord, here it is. It's a mess. It's my life is a train wreck. I've tried to clean it up. I did this and did this, but I still ain't right. I tell you, you come in the state you're in. I don't care what you've got on you, in you, around you. You come like you are and give it to the Lord. The Lord will take it and clean it. When we try to clean it, it ain't going to work. Come to the Lord. Let Him put that Holy Ghost soap on you. He'll clean it out of you. Bob gets the song ready. If you're not saved tonight, maybe this is something that you think that needs to be done. Won't you come? Get this thing settled in your heart.